Hello there, it's another cheeky behind the scenes video. This video contains free product supplied by Freefly Systems. If you've been watching the channel a long time, you know that I mainly use Phantoms. I used them for about half a decade before I even started a YouTube channel. It's just what we used in the film industry back in the day. There have of course been instances where we've used very specialized cameras like black and white 10 million frame a second Shimatsu cameras for very specific purposes. Can't do that kind of thing on a Phantom yet. But you may have noticed in recent videos, we've been using these Ember cameras by Freefly. This is the Ember S2.5K. Specs wise, this is very similar to the Phantom Flex we used to use. It's the same max resolution of, you know, 69, 2560 by 1440 kind of resolution, and it'll do two to 3000 frames a second. So actually slightly faster than the Phantom Flex. The difference is that a new Phantom Flex would cost around $150,000. And this is $25,000. So it's affordable for a high speed camera. It's actually incredible for what it does at this price point, at this size. And even when fully built, which I'll do now, I'll just stick a V-mount battery on the back. My monitor will be a telephone. And I've currently got a Canon mount on. So I'll just stick on this Canon lens. So when it's fully built and ready to shoot, it's still incredibly small and light. And I could obviously put in a smaller battery here or a little pancake lens there, take the monitor off, just use the Wi-Fi, and it'll be even lighter than that. And by ready to shoot, I, re I really mean ready to shoot. As soon as this starts flashing green, it's shooting now in high speed. The phantoms that I use take ages to turn on which usually isn't a problem, if, especially if I'm gonna leave it on all day, but if I wanted to, you know, quickly grab it because there's some lightning or like a hummingbird that's just come into frame, this is gonna be what I'm grabbing. In addition to taking a long time to turn on, the TMX camera also draws 400 watts when it's filming in high speed, so these are no good. So you may have seen this used in some recent videos. I used it in Kentucky, and before this, the 2.5K, I was using the 5K, the 5K resolution is actually higher than any of the Phantoms can shoot, which you may have seen in some of the School of Minds videos and the cheese rolling video. It's the first range of cameras that I've used that I would say competes with the Phantoms for less than like $70,000. When I put it out there side by side with Phantoms getting explosions, I was impressed at how little this blew out. It was able to capture a very bright explosion and not make everything else look like it was nighttime. If you've been up to date on what I've been doing recently, you may have seen me talk about this camera on Adam Savage's Tested YouTube channel, where I was talking to him about high speed and his history of using high speed. And in that video, I said that I use this more like a GoPro than I would use my normal Phantoms. And by that, I don't mean I'm gonna deliberately leave it in a fire or put it somewhere where it could accidentally be shot by a cannon, but I am putting it in more tight spaces or using it on the move where it'd be much harder to do so with the Phantoms. I've actually used this just on the end of a stick upside down when I was testing it out in the quarry with Dan. Sometimes when I'm testing cameras, I'll just give myself a fake assignment, like make an advert. So I pretended to make a one wheel advert. So I'm on a one wheel, Dan's on a one wheel, and I'm chasing him with the Ember S5K on the end of this pole. And because the max resolution of the Ember S5K is 5120 by 4096, there's enough resolution there for me to easily reframe it to 16 by 9 or even reframe it for vertical content, reels and that. So that was a pretty convenient resolution. Even though at max res on the S5K, you're limited to around 400 frames a second. But 400 frames a second in this situation, I think is plenty because it's right in there on a fast moving target and all the tiny stones that are getting kicked up into the focal plane just look so nice and crisp because of that sensor size and the high resolution probably wouldn't be a great shot for a one wheel <laughs> advert though. It's also quite modular, so when I'm not using it on the end of a stick, I can build it up a little bit more. And in the past, I have taken off the battery here and the battery mount completely, put on a much bigger monitor, had the battery powering the monitor and then powering the camera from the same battery that's on the back of a monitor. So there's lots of different ways you can configure this to best suit the situation. It's also become my go-to for filming shorts if I don't need tens of thousands of frames a second just for the ease of quickly repositioning, grab a bit of handheld there, go outside without a bunch of people coming over, that kind of classic stuff. Where this differs from the workflow of the Phantoms is that this can just record straight to the SSD inside until it fills. 
Whereas with the Phantoms, you're recording to RAM first for a much shorter duration. But I have enjoyed just being able to set this running, walking away from it, just knowing that I'm not gonna have to trigger it. The event happens, I walk back over and stop it. And then I can just trim my files later and just keep the important part. I'm gonna nerd out about some pretty standard stuff here, but it's just because I need so much proprietary gear and software to get and use the files from a Phantom. The Ember cameras can just mount as regular drives on either operating system. So you just drag and drop out of the camera onto Mac or Windows. And there's also a pretty robust desktop app that sees the camera either for control or sees it for its footage. And then you can trim the files before even moving them over, over USB 3. And you can even trim and export out of the mobile app over Wi-Fi. it just takes longer. It also records straight to ProRes, which means I don't have to do any file conversions. On the Phantoms, you can do all the controls on the camera itself, but it, it's a bit clunky when you're dealing with massive files. It's sometimes hard to find the event in the footage when not using a laptop, which you may have seen in the Electro Boom video. We we're actually struggling to find the shot a lot of the time. Oh, there, did you see it? Uh, Are you no, serious? No. Oh, don't, <laughs> don't do that to me. <laughs> but the main reason for that is that most people operate Phantoms in a much more controlled environment with laptops attached where it's much easier to find the spot. So on the Phantoms, the on-camera controls are much more secondary. And on here, it's the main way you use the camera. And you can control it all on an app with a phone, live view, or you can have the HDMI out into a monitor and then control with the on-camera controls. Everything on the inbuilt UI is controlled with just a wheel and a button. You can control everything you'd expect to, resolution, frame rate, and it does a nice thing where it tells you how many times slower the frame rate is than your project frame rate. Shutter speed as an angle. On the app, I have seen it done as a fraction too. If the lens has compatible electronics, you can control the aperture, ISO from 100 up to 400, white balance, color space, etc. The app has a lot of features you'd find on a professional monitor for monitoring exposure and focus, like zebras and peaking. I typically always have the histogram turned on and you can, if you also have the waveform on, you can toggle between them, which is nicely thought out. The camera, although it doesn't shoot raw, will reconform the footage you just shot into any playback frame rate you need. So I used this recently for the wing video where I was gonna share a lot of my slow-mo footage with Tested. Their video was 24 frames a second and mine was 25. And using the same shots, I could just export them at both frame rates for both of us to use without having footage be on our timelines in the wrong frame rate. And it even updates the total runtime of your exported clip when you change the frame rate, which is nice. One specific thing I like better on this is that you can increase your scrubbing speed. On the Phantom, you can either play at real time or 10 times real time. This will go up to 500 times speed scrubbing, which sounds mental, but you know, when you're at thousands of frames a second, it's really great for quickly finding the moment for playback. And with the phone app, it's as simple as just dragging the playhead with your finger. Unless the playhead's right at the bottom of the screen, because then instead of sliding the playhead, I more often than not slide the frickin' app all around, which is just a factor of iOS. So thankfully you can raise it up by switching to the other preview mode. So a much more modern experience and being updated a lot more frequently. And they've also recently brought out, since I got the camera, a media expander module, which gives the camera some BNC functionality and the ability to record to external SSDs. Pretty necessary on an actual film set, a proper production because you'll want a live feed for Video Village and you don't want to take the camera out of action if you want to start backing up the files. Overall, I'm extremely glad that cameras like the Ember exist, especially at this price point, because Phantoms over the last two decades have been so prohibitively expensive, even to rent thousands a day. This is cheaper than the eight terabyte Cinemag that goes into my Phantom. I think more people doing high speed is a great thing. We'll be able to enjoy more slow-mo footage across the internet. And who doesn't want that? That's pretty much all I've got to say about this line of cameras. My opinion when it comes to technology is usually worthless, but when it comes to high speed, I feel like I've got some mildly useful input. And I would say this can absolutely compete with Phantoms on any high-end project. So with that, I wanna say a big thanks to Freefly for letting me use their cameras for well over a year before I made the video just to make sure it was properly tested. And if you're interested in seeing some of the full versions of the videos that feature the Ember cameras, click on one of these. Thank you very much for watching. See you next time.